Hi and welcome to stage two of the watercolour portrait. Here you can see I've still got the photograph. I've got my test swatch sheet of skin tones using the cadmium red and the cadmium yellow. And then, as I said before, it's a really good idea to just experiment with a few shades adding more red in or more yellow in and even some burnt umber just to get a variety of skin tones. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to apply some of these skin tones. So I've got here again I've got some brushes, a variety of brushes, different sizes and a large round brush and then I've got my palette with a few of these skin tones ready mixed here one with a little bit of um, uh, a section just with some uh, alizarin and crimson in it which is a dark red and a section also with a bit of uh, cobalt blue a bit mixed with alizarin crimson to give a purple I'm also going to use uh, this burnt umber and continue to use the cadmium red and the cadmium yellow just to mix as we go along. So it's important that you have clean water and clean brushes um, especially with the skin uh, tone because you want to keep it as crisp as possible. So I'm going to start just by adding a few shadows and the shadow colour can either be something like um, your cadmium red and cadmium yellow mix with a little bit of brown or you can add the purple mixing that I was talking about which is um, a little bit of cobalt blue with a bit of alizarin crimson mixed to make a purple and then add a dot of that into your skin tone. Now you can see I've already applied some colour down here this is just cobalt blue and I've just put the stripes on the jumper and then I just roughly painted in a purple tone on the background and that is just so that I can balance the skin tone with a colour rather than with the white because against white skin tone tends to look a bit yellow. So I just put that in and it, what it does is it helps it to soften the skin tone not having the white paper behind the face. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to put some skin shading in and I'm going to look at this area on the left hand side. You can see it's slightly darker here and it's also slightly darker here. And that's because when the portrait was taken, um, the lighting would have been coming from in front of the sitter. Um, so the lighting would have been around the photographer and it would have flashed in the face, which is why we've got a highlight in the centre. So we're going to try and keep the centre fairly clear and just work into the shadows on the side. And what I'm going to take first is something, uh, something like this, which is a little bit of the, the purple. And I'm going to mix with that the original skin orange. And what I get is something like this. Okay. So again, I'm just going to take some more of it and mix a bit more, more of it into the mix. So a little bit of the orange and a little bit of the purple will give me something like this. A little bit more orange, I think. Okay, so I'm just going to, before I do that, what I want to do is I want to take a large round brush and I'm just going to wet the area that I'm going to work in. So over this side I'm going to work into the ear, around the eye and down into the bottom of the face like that. Okay and the reason why I'm doing that, that is so that it doesn't create any hard lines. I'm going to pick up that purple orange mix now I'm just going to drop it in very carefully onto that left hand side and I'm going to closely observe where the shadows fall so I'm going to just take it down into the ear and around 
up into the cheek a little and then down along the side of the chin and around the front of the chin but where the chin sticks out just be very careful and just put it directly underneath and if you if you can see that the pigment is not that strong so what I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up some more red and some more yellow and into that I'm going to put a little touch of brown giving this skin tone like that and I'm going to just add a touch more red into that I think again keep a test sheet so you can test your colors out the whole time so like I said this was red um, cadmium red cadmium yellow and a little bit of burnt umber I'm just going to put that into the very far side of the face so in there around that chin area like I said directly underneath now we can go in and we can put in some color on the right hand side as well so again I'm just going to paint the water down onto the face again like I said this ensures that you don't end up with any hard lines you might want some hard lines later on but we don't want them on this lovely soft face that we're creating so again there's some shadow coming off the top of that forehead it goes under the hair and then it comes down this right hand side also into the eye socket and around and underneath that chin like I said now I can see where I haven't put too much water there so I'm just going to add a little bit more water on that side the color comes down and actually goes into that sort of cheek area there you can drag it and soften it so again we've got some tone on that side now and I forgot to do my ear so I'm going to go into my ear like that okay and we can also put some dark quite a bit thicker actually and not too much water in it underneath on the neckline like that now if there's any other shadows on that face try and get them in now so we can look and we can see that there is some dark now there's quite a lot of water in that central section and that's because the paper's cockled a, a bit so the water is is collecting down here so I'm just going to dab it off a touch with a bit of paper towel and then we can go back in and we can be a little bit more controlled with the amount of color we put in here so I can see that all the way down the side of that nose on this side of the nose there's a bit more on this cheek there's a bit more here a touch more here there's a little bit coming underneath actually that's the lip there but underneath that area there is a little bit of shadow also and also around the chin and as it's drying off you can actually just smooth it in a bit if you've got a little bit too much in places just smooth the pigment in and if you've got too much in places like maybe there's a little too much on the center of that nose just take a towel paper towel and just dab a little pigment off but you can only do this while it's wet like that can you see okay so I'm I'm sort of pretty happy with that at the moment so I'm not going to do much work uh, much more work there because I'm going to work into the hair while this dries off a touch because I don't want to um, overwork the face uh, mainly because it's a young face and we want to keep it bright and fresh okay so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, while I'm waiting I'm going to blow it a bit as well because the edges you can see it's still a bit wet around that eye so I do need to be careful around where I put the hair in now so I've got some burnt umber and I'm just going to put in can you see how that's now bleeding onto the face so if it bleeds just tap it off like that okay so I'm just gonna have to be extra careful 
when putting these lines in. So I'm just going to put some of the darker areas of colour in around the ear. So down into that ear shape. It's all very dark around there and there's a long, nice beautiful long strip there. Now I'm doing this, what they call wet on dry. So this was wet on wet, so we put the water down first and we drop the colour in and then you get a nice softness, whereas this is wet on dry. So we're just going to put in, so the paper is dry and you're putting di colour directly onto the paper. So we're going to put some curls in here, a bit more paint. Like so. And because I've done it out there a bit, I'm just going to put some more. So again, a bit more paint and I'm going to look over the top side here and there is a streak here. Now you can see that that's gone into the face again. So pick up your paper towel, dab it off. Hopefully it won't leave too much of a mark. Like that. And there is a dark section here. And there is a dark section going across from the parting, across the top of the head there. So can you see, oh gosh, look at that. Let's just get rid of that. That just shows you not to rush things. So please wait for things to dry before you start working on them. So again, into the ear area, round the ear and underneath where it's really dark. So even in that section, I could even put a little bit of Payne's Grey in there just to make it extra extra dark and it makes the ear stand out as well. Just be careful with the Payne's Grey, it can be very strong. But we've got another patch of darkness here coming down and we put the hair up like that. And do we have any more darkness here? Yes we do, just about there. So again, you can go into a lighter tone. So now I'm using a burnt sienna. Um, my hair was sort of ready brown, going into golden tones when I was younger. So I'm gonna try and keep a little bit of lightness, but just by adding a slightly lighter brown or even a little bit of yellow or gold or whatever will lighten up that area really nicely into the side of the face again. I'm just going to put a little bit of hair coming. I'm just going to fill this area in here. And we'll have a few more curls coming out there in a minute, I think. We'll have a few more there like that. And again, the next tone down, which is the burnt sienna. <coughs> But whatever colours you need, obviously it really depends on what colour hair you had as a child. If you're using, if you're, if you've got blonde hair, then use yellow tones, but water them down so that they don't look bright yellow across the top. And you can leave flecks of the undercoat showing through if you want to. Um, it does work quite nicely, but close observation of how the hair falls on the face etc etc will help. So any highlights what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix in a little bit of yellow ochre into the brown that I'm mixing. So a bit of yellow ochre and you can put some highlights in like so.
just keep painting those tones in close observation of where the highlights fall I'm going to pick up some proper yellow ochre there and just put in a few flashes here just to describe the outer edge of that and that bit there and there's a hair coming down there and just have fun with it look at how the shape of the how the hair falls and use those two or three different tones to describe the movement and how the hair is sitting on the head. Okay, while you're waiting for the face to continue to dry, you can put some darker tones in on the, um, on the jumper or whatever you're wearing. So a few darker areas. I'm gonna put a stronger line here just so that it brings attention to the face. I'm just going to put in a little bit more blue there. I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail on the clothing because obviously the focus is the face. So you don't need to. Um, the clothing is just to sort of add interest to what's going on in general, but you don't want people to look at the clothing necessarily. Um, for too long so just put a suggestion of what's going on rather than filling in every single detail it's not necessary and the eye doesn't like it anyway so there you go a little bit more detail around the neckline and around the main section of the jumper right so back into now in here, you, we may go back in and put some shadow in, but for the moment, I'm going to take a fine brush and I'm going to start working into those eyes. So I have brown eyes, sort of a chestnut brown eye. So carefully, because obviously this is still wet, just pop in the colour of the eye, like so. Yeah. and this is where you start coming to life just by putting a touch of colour in that eyeball just going to put a little touch more in that one like I said just be careful about the fact it's much better wait for it to dry rather than I'm just going to put some along the top there okay the other place you can put some um, burnt on um, burnt on with tone is in the mouth. So I've got a bit of burnt on there, mixing it with a bit of um, alizarin crimson, so I get that sort of tone. And I'm just going to put it in the corners of the mouth, and this is to describe the um, the inside skin of the inside of the mouth. So just in there like that. Just in there like that. Okay. And we're not going to paint the lips red. Everybody thinks, oh, lips, lips must be red. They're not. They're just a darker tone of skin. So you take that skin tone, whatever you've got, the red and the yellow, you add a little bit of um, burnt umber into it and we're going to put the skin tone on the lips so up and down and those will also have a highlight on them so I'm just going to put a little suggestion of lip colour in there and then I might go back in and just um, add some darker pigment in later so again Cross those lips and up, square off the bottom lip, keep looking at your image, keep working with your image and mop up any mistakes. So I've got a little bit too rounded here, so I'm just going to lift off a bit of pigment there and a little bit of pigment 
there. Just soften the edge into the rest of the face and make sure you're, when you soften things in, make sure that your um, brush is damp. So just tap it off, not too wet. Because if it's too wet, then it will leave cauliflower um, marks. Cauliflowers are where um, wet paint hits dry paper. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of extra color there where the chin is. I'm just gonna push that around again with a semi-dry brush, clean semi-dry brush. So I'm dipping it in the water and then I'm just wiping it off on my, dip it in the water, wipe it off on your piece of paper towel or loo roll, whatever you've got, and just put in that chin. And like I said, just soften it in to the rest of the, the picture like so and then the same set in the same way we're just going to take a little bit of that and we're just going to bring the chin out slightly by putting a line underneath like that and the chin would come around there like that and then again just softening that in with a semi dry brush like so Semi dry brush and just soften it into the rest of the picture. Soften, soften, soften. And you can really go to town with that. And just keep softening. Just soften it in. If the, if the chin is too big or too small, just pop a little more paint back in. I just I think I need to make it a bit smaller the highlight on the chin anyway, that's what I'm talking about here. And just pat, pat those marks in. And like I said, not too much water. Okay, so to take the emphasis off the teeth, I'm just gonna put a little bit of gray, not gray, um, sort of purple, grey toning. So I've got the purple mix which is alizarin crimson mixed with um, ultramarine and I've just put a really small amount of grey. Test it out on your paper. You want something like that. This is going onto the teeth. It needs to be really thin. Okay and it's just to take off that whiteness that is there at the moment. So just fill that in like that. We're going to do the same on the eyeballs. We're just going to put that little bit of purple in there. And that's just creating a shadow. Let's put the pupils in. So they need to be nice and dark, almost black. You can use Payne's Grey. <laughs> We're just going to pop those in. Again, make sure you observe closely where they are in the eye. And don't do this until your eye colour has dried off and obviously leave a little highlight. So same again. Looks dark to begin with. Oops. Oops. See, that's still wet. So I'm going to have to wait for that to dry to put it in. Okay. So in we go now. We're going to use again a darker skin tone. Something like this. We're just going to put in the nostrils, being careful not to. So just put in a couple of marks for the nostrils and a slight shadow around those curves. We can also pick up some of the paint and just put in a nice ear shape in here like that again close observation of what's going on will help you enormously i can see that there's a shape that comes up and up and into that area there and i can see that i haven't quite gone up to the edge of the ear so i'm going to take up some pigment which i can still see is wet there and just carefully finish that ear off there properly and also the side of the face where that it's come down there. 
I'm going to take some of this wet paint that's here already. I'm going to drag a bit of it down so it comes over the ear. And obviously the hair would hang around that area. I think it needs to be a touch darker. So I'm going to just pick up some paint. And just again, go back in and just put in some extra depth with a little bit of darker tone in there. Okay. So again, oh, we can use that same pigment that I just picked up just to put a loose eyebrow in. So put it down first and test it and see if it's a bit dark or a bit light and just make sure it's the right colour. And I'm just going to put that carefully in there. And then again, wash the rest of the paint off and just soften. You know, little kids are not going to have too much eyebrow. But do remember that this watercolour will dry a little lighter. So just soften it in. You can always go back and soften it more if it needs it. Just soften it into the face structure. Okay, we're going to put some pink. So the pink tone I use is always alizarin crimson and it's just watered down alizarin crimson and we're going to define the teeth by using this. So I'll go into the side of the mouth. I'm going to actually put the central section down and I'm going to do the two front teeth first. So one, two, like that. And then up and over for the next and they sort of go in a curved shape as they go backwards. But again, don't overwork this area. We don't want too much attention on those teeth. So just be careful that you don't put too much in there. I've, it needs to be a really delicate. Um, I'm just going to take away the bottom sides of those like that. Okay. So again, oh, I forgot the, um, the other ear. So in, in with this other ear colour again and up and into the face here and again just drag some hair down to define that ear there there's not too much of that ear showing so i'm not going to go into too much detail over there okay now um, around the eyes you're going to need a really fine brush or a rigger brush for this job and this is where care is needed. So this is a rigger brush. Basically, it's just a long, thin brush that comes to a tip, a nice, fine point, whether you drag it down or up, it'll come to a nice, fine point. So you need something like that. A detail brush or a rigger brush will do that for you. And some nice dark colour. And we're going to go around these eyes and just define them now. So I'm going to put a top line on this eye here. So along the top and then down quite swiftly. I'm going to work from this side because I'm, I'm right handed. So along the top and then down like that. Okay, you can also at the same time just go round the eyeball the iris and the pupil with a dark line. You can also just put in carefully an upper line on the nostril. That'll just give you a little bit more definition. And also you can put in, oh, actually what we'll, we'll use for that is a slightly lighter tone. So we'll mix up the same color, but with a little bit more orange in it. And we just put on a very lightly an eyelid like that. Same over here, an eyelid that comes right across the top of the eye with this one and then over. Yeah, it maybe wants to come a bit lower than that, but never mind. And any darkness that there might be in the eyebrow, just a little touch, there's a little touch on that side. Just a little bit more definition. Um, an inner edge on that ear again. Maybe an inner edge on that ear again. 
and it's starting to come to life. The only thing that I shouldn't have done is I've got a bit lost here with the pupil so I'll just put that back in now while I've got some darker pigment on my brush. Again, darken this up if it needs darkening, like that. So hopefully that looks a little better, it doesn't look too bad. Back into the lighter pigment, that's a little bit of brown mixed with the orange and we're just going to put, we're only going to put a little line just going along here and into that corner, like that. It comes to quite a point. Um, and the same over here, just on the underside of that eye. And I'm just going to put a little bit of darkness in there and a little bit of darkness in there because my eyes are quite squeezed together and that will give that impression. Um, now, round this edge. I don't know what this is called, this part of the eye here, but it's important that you put that in. Okay, oh, i tell you what we haven't got in just yet is the other cheeks. So I'm just going to put a little definition line here for now and hope that that's enough. So just put a cheek mark in. Yeah, that seems okay. I'm going to work now into defining these lips. So I'm going to come in with a dark shadow there, into that corner. And I can see that it's really dark in there. And it sort of stretches out into, right, there we go. That's working okay. And again, actually, I'm going to put a little touch of red in here, just a touch, just on this base coat here, on the bottom lip, just to give it a little bit of colour. And uh, and then it comes and it sort of goes around the edge there and then down into that section there. And we're going to put a little bit of extra colour just on this upper lip here just to give it a little bit more definition. And in here, we can actually come round a bit more, I think, like that. And I'm just gonna wet, wet, wash my brush off. And I'm just gonna soften that edge in there. Soften it in, like that. Soften that in. This is with a semi-dry brush, remember? Just going to lift a little bit of that off, just there. Like that. And I'm going to leave that to dry and hopefully that will um, dry nicely. Right, so underneath here I need some definition. Just going to take some of that darker pigment and go under the chin so that it stands out better. Like that. Okay, so you can see it coming coming together quite nicely. It really is just a matter now of keeping at it, building up the tones. If you feel like you need more definition in the face, take a little bit of that orange red mix, test it out on your paper and then go back in. But like I said, just be careful with the face itself. Make sure you put some water down before you put the face tone on, like so, and then drop the pigment into it so that it doesn't form hard edges. So if you want some more shadow on that right hand side, just repeat the exercises we did earlier on. I just want to show you what happens when you don't put the water down. So if you don't put the water down, what happens is you get hard edges so in here we can afford to put some hard edges in so we're going to put a little mark here and that will just accentuate the side of the nose here but I'd like it to have a defined line so I'm putting it on wet on dry same over here I'm just going to put another layer of colour. This is called glazing, it's basically you put um, wet colour on top of the dry 
paint or paper it's a glaze I'm going to put a little bit of tone under here like that and what else can we do have a little bit more over here where the eye is just a touch there a little touch there I mean the best thing to the best thing to do is not to overwork it too much so less is more in watercolor just go in it go at it very very slowly and know when to stop so the only thing I would work on a bit more I think is just in this here in here we need some more definition so I'm going to just put in a little bit more color using that purple mix that I had we definitely need it to be darker down the middle of the tooth and then we definitely need it to be darker on the inside edge of that mouth so we've got one tooth there one tooth there and then so on and so forth so just like I said just be really careful with these teeth that you don't overdo it and soften things in so they don't look too hard softening with a semi-dry brush and then I'm going to go back in with a little bit of dark brown and I'm going to just put an edge on that lip so the lip actually comes up and then it goes down into a point almost and then it goes back up again like that into that corner like that okay so now uh, I just wanted to show you one last thing and that is how to lift off some paint so if you've got a mistake or if you want to make something lighter then lifting off is a really good technique and I will talk about this a little bit more in future tutorials but if you wanted to lift off say a highlight on the hair and the hair is just about dry so you can you can do this when it's still wet or you can do it when it's dry so all you need to do is take a wet brush and just put in the mark that you want to lift off and you can take a piece of paper towel and just dab it off and you can see there's a mark there now if we do it again so in here I want a highlight up here so wet brush clean wet brush put the water on and then just one tap one press and lift and again let's do it down here clean brush not too much water um, There's a highlight coming down here as well, isn't there? So I put the water down. I'm using a clean portion of tissue and then just press. And you're lifting off the top layer of paint. OK, so I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to play around with finishing this off a bit. I'll work a bit more into the mouth and I'll work a bit more into the eyes and so on and so forth. But really, that's about finished. There's just some fine details that I need to just tweak a little um, and just define a little bit more. Um, but like I said, don't overdo it. Keep it simple and just try and enjoy it as much as you can. It's very difficult. Painting a young child's face is probably one of the hardest things you can do. Trying to get a likeness, trying to paint teeth, very, very difficult. So just try your best and practice as much as you can and try and keep it as simple as possible to begin with you can always go in and add more and more detail and the best thing to remember is less is more and also try to wait for things to dry in between so that you're not having colors bleeding into one another that's really um, can be very frustrating at times okay I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks so much to, for watching again. And do comment in the comment box below if you need any help. And subscribe to 
receive not notifications about new tutorials etc. Okay and I'll see you again soon.